what we give our final predictions for what we think is going to happen to the shy this week but let's take a look at the trailer one more time no yeah. just like you left it if things are out of order it's just because we cleaned up before you came home sorry if everything is not exactly the way you left it If Maybe you need you anything, should. if you need anything, just let us know. Maybe you should try to get some sleep. I'll be right outside all night. It goes down this Sunday, ladies and gentlemen. And Larry, I want to say this to the people. If you, when you watch movies and TV shows, I pay attention to small details. Mm -hmm. Pay attention to the music they splice into different scenes because that's trying to set the tone of what they're trying to highlight during that segment. And when what right. we just saw, when she put that, that um, chair at the door, did you guys hear the change in tone in the music? They was yeah. trying to invoke fear. They was trying to invoke um, a sense of desperation. And those type of things help elevate what's going on in a scene of a movie or a TV show at that moment. And I think they're showing us the tone for the next um, episode. But Larry, expand upon what you think is going to happen in this coming episode. Well... You know, she's afraid. She's got to get out. We already saw her out a little bit on, you know, on, on another trailer. So we know she gets out the house a little bit. And we know she's going to talk to Ronnie a little bit. So I think she's, I think, I think Ronnie's going to end up being a little bit of a, he's going to be sort of her place of respite. She's going to, she's going to find some camaraderie with him, you know, because you know, maybe no one else really knows what she went through. It's not like Ronnie fully understands what she went through, but he was there with her. He's the one that went and tried to find her. And I think he's going to, I think they're going to sort of find a connection. I don't, and I'm not talking about some weird romantic connection. I think they're mm -hmm. just going to have that sort of connection that two people get when they've gone through a traumatic experience together. It's like people who have been in a plane crash or something will stay in touch with each other, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And I think it may be something like that. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out the way she jumped back when her mom tried to, tried to hug her and she didn't want to be touched, mm -hmm. you know, tells me that maybe she had been repeatedly raped or something and she doesn't want anybody touching her, you know? Um, yeah, I, I, I'm curious to see how this all, how this all plays out. I want to know what's going to happen with her, you know? I mean, she's got a body on her. That puts that does something to a person. When you kill someone, I think that just does something to you. And I'm curious to know what, how that's going to affect her. Right. And she's, I mean, mentally, there are just going to be so many barriers she's going to have to overcome. And th the things I'm looking for are what are going to be the beacons of hope in her life. I think Kevin is possibly going to be a beacon of hope for her. Um, right. Possibly maybe Emmett could be a beacon of hope for her um, because I think deep down on the inside, she did have some real deal love for Emmett. Right. Um, uh, Ronnie's probably going to be a beacon of hope, but that leads me into a discussion. Larry, so many people are tired of Ronnie. Like I, really? I, I mean, I'll be reading comments where a lot of cats are just like, why is Ronnie still on the show? What is his purpose? And I've said to them, well, we you know, yeah, right. They, they've resur resurrected his character to be a sympathetic person, to fulfill what he wanted to fulfill for his grandmother by saving Keisha. He did that. And 
You know, it's kind of like, what are they going to do with him next? So a lot of people's like, get rid of his ass. Um, they don't see the value in him. And I think that he does have a little bit more intrinsic value left as a character on the show, depending upon where they decide to go with him being involved in Keisha's life. Right. Um, I mean, when you when you look at Ronnie, Ronnie is one of those, as much as people may not like him, Ronnie is really sort of a pivotal character that that you need so much as what of what has happened to the other main characters has mm -hmm. centered around Ronnie's life and what he's done. I mean, you think about it from the very beginning, the very beginning of this show when um when what was his son's name? Jason. Yeah. When he was killed, that was Ronnie's son who was killed. You know, right. mm -hmm. when when all the stuff started to happen with the other dude, with the other Jason, the one that um the one, you know, the dude that ran the food truck, all that stuff started because he had picked up that gold chain and Ronnie went after looking for who killed his son. And when he found dude with the gold chain, he killed him. Mm -hmm. And so that started. And then you had the whole thing with with Ronnie going to jail and then him getting out. And then it was just I mean. Everything that seems to have happened with the with other people's lives and other storylines in this show have been centered around somehow what Ronnie has done, and it hasn't stopped. It's still happening now with Keisha. You know, she's gone missing, and why everybody else was out there, why why Kevin's out there, you know, up there about to try and get try and, and bust his cherry with the little with the little militant chick. And why and why Jake is up there hanging out with his brother, kicking in walls for cash, and and why everybody else is doing everything else. Why why when uh what's her name, uh Dre, what's her name Dre? Why she's up there losing faith, talking about we need to start the grieving process. Ronnie's the only one still up there putting in work and finding the girl. Mm -hmm. And you know, they so Ronnie, I mean, for people who say what is his purpose. What's not his purpose? What are these other people doing that that is so pivotal in this show? I mean, they, other people. I'm not going to say that. They, other people have roles in this show, but Ronnie's role is nowhere near from over. I right. mean, the way they did him with this, if they wanted to get rid of Ronnie, they should have killed Ronnie in that room. Like they should have had Ronnie beat that dude, and he and him, me, him and Ronnie get into a fight. Keisha's able to escape, and maybe Ronnie and that dude end up killing each other in that room. That would have been the way to end Ronnie's story right there and give him a victorious out where he would have had redemption and he would have had death. They kind of they could have gotten rid of his character all all and done wrapped his whole story up in there. And when they didn't wrap his story up, that told me they like Ronnie and Ronnie's gonna be around for a minute. So and and to tie tie this up so we can move on. We've got a lot a big show today. Um, my folk Tia Reed Griff and Olympia Horton. What's up, Bear Theater? By the way. This is something that has come up, Larry. Would the writers make this a story in which Keisha either ends up pregnant or with an STD or Larry possibly both? What would that look like if they went in that direction? That would certainly have to be something that they display next season. But how would that change this story? Well, I'm not sure that they're going to give her an STD. That just, I mean, they could, but that just seems unusually cruel. Mm -hmm. And, but I could very well see them with her pregnant mm. where she, mm -hmm. where they, cause they said they're going to give her an STD panel. I'm assuming with that panel, they're going to give her a pregnancy test. Right. And, and so with that, with that, I would not be at all surprised if, if they came back and said, no, you don't have any STDs, but you are, two weeks, four weeks, yeah. six weeks, however long she's been missing. If they, she came back, you know, within that time frame, being pregnant and, and cause then you have this whole other, you have this whole other dilemma. What do I do? Do I keep this child that's right. that, from a monster that I actually killed? And, and, and how do I deal with that? Do I deal? I mean, I mean, what do you do? You grow up, you, you have the kid grow up and you have to, you, first of all, you have to try not to hate and resent this child. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, you have to then eventually tell the child when he's asking where your dad is, just tell me your dad was a psycho kidnapper who raped me multiple times. And then I killed him to get free. Mm -hmm. that, that, I mean, that is a lot. That's a lot to ask a, a young 18 year old child. That's a lot of a, that's a lot of a burden, a big burden to ask to put on an 18 year old child. And, 
Yeah, I don't know, but I see them. I I can see them going down that route. I mm-hmm. hope they don't, but I can see them going down that route. But I I hope even I mean, I I have known, I have known people who have had children through trauma, and it 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 does just doesn't turn out good. The relationships are horrible. I mean, of course, horrendous. Of course. It, right. I mean, so much so that it's like if you were going to have that child, you should have just given birth and given that child away or never have given birth because that child, that child's relationship with their mother is so messed up. Mm-hmm. And I agree. And, and and for the likelihood of a continued dynamic story, I can easily see them going down the road if she gets pregnant. Be, and you start talking about what's worse, STD or KID. And this chick having a KID long term with the mental trauma that this child is going to represent could be chaotic for her. But then you also can bring up the moral dilemma of should she abort the baby, have it, deliver it and give it away. And maybe someone in her own family circle starts tripping like her mama. And then she can look at her mom and be like, but you marry another woman. How is that morally right in the Bible? If they decide to go down that road, you can have all these other dilemmas going on surrounding her getting pregnant. And I think that if she decided, if they met, wrote the story where Keisha kept the baby, mm-hmm. you could make, like you said, you could create a story every time she has a love-hate relationship when she looks at that child. It could be it could be a story, but it could also be a pretty sad story too because where does that end? How, where, where would it end if you went down that road? Well, if you, I mean, here's the sad part is, is that if she... If she has a child right now, mm-hmm. her future, as far as as leaving and running track, is done. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think for I think for a woman who is um, who's healthy and in a good place and has family to support her, I think a woman who you know, a young girl who got pregnant like that, and let's just say that that. Let's say that she and Emmett were dating or whoever boyfriend she had were dating mm-hmm. and she did get pregnant. And 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 that boyfriend was like, please have the child. I still want you to go off to school. Either I'll come with you and 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 help raise the child. Or the mother was like, leave your baby here, go off to school and get an education. So when you come back to be a full time mother, you'll be in a better place. I can see maybe someone in a healthy situation like that being able to make a decision to do that, but it, where she's currently at, mm-hmm. I just don't see that going in any place good. It's kind of like if she's going to have a baby, that's that whole situation is going to be jacked up. And if she doesn't have a baby, I hope everybody else around her, whether they agree with it or not, just give her the space to make that decision and and peace and with so she can have a clear mind and clear conscience in making it and honestly i hope she i hope she ends up this leaving the season and going away right i, I mean i like keisha mm-hmm. and i like the fact that she's that she's 18 now because now i'm free to look but i would really rather her leave and go away to school and run track and and get her life together and find a place where she can be happy you know right. Unfortunately, I find that in the shot. How's she gonna walk? How's she gonna leave and go to the bus stop and, and wait for the bus? Larry, How's she gonna, you know, if she goes to work, how's she gonna go at night when she has a night shift or she starts the daytime and the wintertime when she gets off at five o'clock and it's already dark? How's she gonna get on the bus? The only way she would be able to do that, she's gonna have to go through months of counseling. But I think that possibly her having a kid, Larry, could be the anchor that keeps her in Chicago until she can get the therapy needed to overcome both situations. So if she know. needs a kid, call Emmett. Man. I mean, right. dude's dropping babies left and right. All he has to do well, is look at a hot chick and she's pregnant. Well, Larry, he got his hand full because Dominique might mess around and be pregnant. And that sure. is going to be as much of a diabolical baby as we can mention. That's man, he's you. got he's got both his hands full with all of that. Yeah, man. I mean, he he he's the type of brother that should have came out the womb with a vasectomy. That's what should have happened to him because his ass look in a woman's direction, and she's a certain age, she pops up pregnant. And so man. I have I have no doubt that there's going to end up being a pregnancy from the shy season three. It's just a matter of who is it going to be. 